It's the year of the splitter. You know I love splitters. And before we get going, this is part two of a series I did with Kyle Stanley of Setup Man. He has a cool channel with a ton of Cubs content. I get into why I like splitters so much and how it relates to some Cub pitchers. So if you're looking for part one, head over to his place. Until then, let's get going on pitcher injuries. Why are there so many pitcher injuries? It's the question that is going to be impossible to avoid for the next few years at the start of every season. Ken Rosenthal and Eno Saris recently had a piece in The Athletic about this very topic, and it contains some pretty direct quotes from Rangers orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Keith Meister, including this paraphrase from Rosenthal pointing to the sweeper and power changeups as significant reasons for this spike. Now, I'll qualify most of this video by saying my opinion on this matter pales in comparison to Meister's. He's inside pitcher elbows what seems like every day of the year at this point. I will never do that, but I'll admit when I first saw this, as reasoning for the spike in injuries, I laughed. I thought it was just a weird way to blame two pitches for the rash of injuries we've had. But in the interest of introspecting a bit and trying to consider the other side, I tried to actually look for some information to back up what Meister is saying that maybe wasn't included in the athletics piece, and I may have found something. Driveline Baseball actually did a study examining elbow stress and found that when you normalize elbow stress for velocity, curveballs actually had the highest levels of stress. Now, why does that matter? Meister didn't mention anything about curveballs. The thing is, a sweeper is basically a curveball with a different seam orientation. Most guys are given sweepers and told to cue curveball out of hand and let the seams of the baseball do most of the work. Now, I'm not trying to put words in Driveline's mouth here. This is merely a connection I'm making. But if curveballs are more stressful and sweepers are harder than curveballs on average by about two miles per hour, and thrown similarly with different orientations, maybe there's some merit to this idea that relative to other pitches, sweepers are more stressful. If you pull pitchers who have thrown the most sweepers above 83 miles per hour, for example, over the last two seasons, two of the top three right now are down with injuries. The rest of these guys are a mix who have been surprisingly healthy of late and some that haven't, but for non-UCL reasons. Dr. Glenn Feisig, a leading industry expert on biomechanics, also had thoughts on this in Rosenthal's piece, saying the opposite of what I am saying here, that he didn't think there was much more reason to believe that sweepers cause elevated injury risk, despite not having studied them in his lab specifically. As with many things this complex, you can find evidence to kind of support either side. So maybe there's something here that Meister's getting at, but to me, it just seems too pointed on something that maybe isn't the main driver of an increase in injuries, despite the fact that I tried my best to kind of flip my mindset and think about how Meister could be correct. What I and many other people have talked about in relation to this piece think is causing injuries is really just velocity. And this is mentioned in the athletics piece, which I commend them for doing because I think it clashes with Meister's point. And it reminds me of something I heard at Wake Forest's Bridge Seminar, which is a conference aimed at bridging the gap between coaches and the medical field, Jimmy Buffy, founder of Reboot Motion and a very smart guy, had a presentation where he showed what his database of biomechanics information thought were the variables that have the highest relationship to stress on the arm. And what stood out is that the set of variables which led to an increase in stress on the arm were also the ones that correlated to velocity. Velocity is essentially a byproduct of sending more energy through your chain and out the arm, thus more stress. You're accepting more risk by increasing ball velocity, but you're also accepting more potential reward. The logical counter here is, well, what if a pitcher just has more efficient mechanics? He'd be healthier. And that's where I go to Kyle Wasserberger of Driveline Baseball, who points out that better mechanics don't mean less stress. It often means the opposite. By becoming more efficient, you're sending more energy through the kinetic chain, which increases ball velocity and therefore stress. This is a graph from Wasserberger's tweet, which he shows the relationship between joint loads and velocity. If you're on this line here, this curved line, it means that for your velocity, you're experiencing normal joint loads. So in the case of these dots, which are testing instances for an individual pitcher, that pitcher went from averaging 73 miles per hour, which is below average velocity for the joint load he was bearing, to gaining about what looks like eight to 10 miles per hour and having joint loads, which are now more average relative to that velocity. The joint load went up, sure, but you could argue pretty clearly that this was a benefit for the pitcher if his goal is to get hitters out. In the past, he was taking on a lot of joint load for poor velo. Now he has marginally more joint load for much more velocity. An essential point to consider is that the goal of major league pitchers is to get hitters out. 
Major League pitchers are the 1% of the 1%. You go to any bat field in Arizona or Florida, there's 100 pitchers there you don't know the name of, and 99 of them you're never going to know the name of. So to suggest that one of those 99 shouldn't accept a bit more risk to make it, and going after the two things right now, I believe the front offices believe is the most predictive of getting major league hitters out, stuff in the form of power changeups and sweepers, and et cetera, and velocity, which has been shown through the data numerous times that is more predictive of getting major league hitters out. It's just a bit naive to me. It's a bit tough to tell that guy you should not accept more risk for the chance of immense reward and lifelong wealth. Now, the other angle on this and the counter I get all the time as well, the other way to become that one guy out of the 100 that makes it is just to learn how to pitch or to command the baseball better. And I think I agree with that. I think that's a fair point. You see some lower velocity guys in the majors make it. Understand, totally understandable. It's just from the front office angle, it's my understanding that that stuff is not as predictive, right? We don't have a great idea how to train command, how to train pitchability. To me right now, it just seems like as you age, you run into a survivorship bias where the guys with good command are just 30 plus. And those just happen to be the guys that have stuck around the league, the stuff guys who never figured out how to command the ball end up jumping out of the league. So until we can figure out how to understand training of command, understand training of pitchability and embrace that, I think we're stuck in this area where front offices are just more comfortable betting on things like stuff and velocity that are more predictive, where things like command year over year are not as predictive. So that's where I think we're going, perhaps is understanding that command side more through biomechanics. But right now, it is naive, I think, to tell those guys they should not go after the two pillars that front offices are valuable. And again, Meister isn't so naive to think this. He says in the athletics piece that he isn't gonna be the one to tell guys not to throw the sweeper. But I would be really curious about whether Meister has any thoughts on workload management. The thing I think about a lot is that every year we get to a spike of injuries in spring training in April, just as pitchers are ramping up their throwing. And when I see that, it's hard for me not to think that something is amiss with how pitchers are either A, managing their offseason throwing or workload, or B, programmed to ramp up out of the offseason. Workload to me feels like one of the main things that we on the public side have very little information about, and it's probably the most obvious thing that may give certain teams a competitive advantage over others in the next few years, and that will manifest in keeping pitchers healthier. The Yankees, for example, posted a relatively mundane video of reliever Tommy Conley mic'd up this spring training in which I noticed they had pocket radars or radar guns measuring the pitcher's catch play velocity. It might seem dumb, right? Just throw the ball, you know your body, blah, blah, blah. But if that's part of how they calculate workload or monitor throwing intensities and build up into eventual programming for a guy like Conley to increase the probability he's healthy, then I don't see an issue with that at all. I'd posit they're probably doing a better job than the majority of other organizations and at least thinking and capturing data surrounding workload. It's probably another thing to actually implement and come up with plans that players buy into, but I'd rather have the team at step one than the team at step zero who's not even thinking about these things. So what's next? Maybe the onus moves to the league to do something. The problem is that they have competing interests. The first is to make pitchers healthier, which has become complicated by adding the pitch clock, which is something I didn't even really touch on in this video, but I think has large implications on pitcher health. Number two, keep the game marketable, which I think has a lot to do with good starting pitchers. And number three, the obvious one is to make money. Now the league could play with multiple variables, right? Less games, more off days, bigger rosters, which all in theory would encourage pitcher health. But then you also have things that maybe run counter to these that could help the game from a quality standpoint. Tie the DH to the pitcher, batter minimums of pitchers faced beyond three, limiting the option carousel between the majors and minors to encourage, again, pitchers that can take on workload at the major league level. Now, I did ask some smart baseball people about this topic, and the one answer I got back that opened my eyes a bit is that the league probably has little to no realistic influence over pitcher health. It's on the teams to figure out workload management and how to utilize workload management to keep pitchers healthier. And many teams this individual didn't think had down workload management, or they weren't even putting many resources into actually improve how their guys are programmed to counter whatever the league mandates that may throw off the pitcher health scale. So if I'm being honest, I don't really know where to go from here. I think it's impossible to disincentivize velocity. I think what we might run into is a slowing of the rate of growth of velocity increases over time. Maybe that puts some pressure back on things like command and control and puts us into the deeper well of biomechanics. Those tools become more prevalent, more accessible. Maybe we eventually see some connection there between biomechanics and command. And therefore, as the rate of velocity plateaus and everyone has velocity, then the advantages come back to where you're able to put the ball and how you're able to put the ball there. 
consistently. I really do think workload is important, but that might be coming from the fact that on the public side, we don't have a great understanding of it. So to me, it's kind of this black box. And I think that perhaps there's a solve in there for the injury problem or somewhat of a solve in there by looking more into their workload side. I don't really know which teams are perhaps further ahead on the workload management side of things. If I had to guess, it's probably just the teams right now that we perceive as smarter. I'll put the Dodgers in there, put the Rays in there. I think the Twins might be in there. But even a team like the Yankees, as I mentioned, are at least thinking about it in some way. But I have difficulty ranking who perhaps are the top 10 teams from a workload perspective overall. And I think the league is just going to continue to incentivize offense, right? Which is going to run counter to everything we're talking about on limiting injuries and that side of things. So the sport as a whole, I think, is in a really tough spot. I think a lot of the the things that solve situations like this is just time. See how things manifest over time and whether every single year injuries get worse or perhaps they plateau, bodies just get more comfortable with velocity. There's a lot of angles you can look at. I know people don't like patience, but I really think that might be the key here. And if you're a team in an organization, I really think investment in workload management and understanding how to maybe make your pitchers 5% marginally healthier is a competitive advantage that if you compound it over multiple years will really help your organization. So as always, I'm fascinated, I think more so on any other topic I've ever done to hear your comments and your thoughts on this. I'll be in the comments as always. Thank you for watching.